Good morning, everyone. And welcome to church on this beautiful day that God has made for us. Dear friends, we are gathered as God's people. And this morning we are going to hear from his word. We're going to praise him in song and we're going to bring our prayers to him. And so as we start our service, I'm going to invite um, Ray to play All Creatures of Our God and King. And I think the words to that song will be behind us. Whilst we still can't sing, sadly, we can at least, uh, yeah, meditate on those words. And I'd encourage you to do so. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, Ray. Friends, we may not be able to sing just yet, but we can speak. We can declare what we believe. I'm going to invite you to stay seated and join me as we say the words of the Apostles' Creed together. Friends, let me ask you, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the forgiveness of people, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, are there any kids ready for Kids Spot? Nick, should I ask them to come up? Come up, kids. Sound check. Sound check is functional. All right, who have we got? So this morning, I thought we'd talk about invisible things. So in Colossians 1, it talks about how Jesus is the image of the invisible God. And we can't see God, we can't go, there he is, and point at him. What are some other things that are invisible? Anything? The wind can't see the wind we can see the effect the wind has on on our hair on the trees and it tells us a bit about the wind but doesn't really explain everything so I thought we're going to have to help understand that I'm going to play a little game and hopefully the clicker works otherwise next slide so what I've done is I've taken some photos of shadows of things so we can't you can't see the things but you'll see the shadow of it the effect it's had on the light and we're going to try guess what that is. So some of these things are from George's bedroom, yes. <laughs> so what, what does that look like? 
What, what does that thing look like? We'll start off with some easy things. Have a guess. Yell it out. Pencil. A pencil. Correct. <laughs> Trusty pencil. All right, next slide. <laughs> Yell it out. A fork. A fork, that's right. Nice and easy. All right, now we'll go to the next one. I thought we'll go a bit, bit trickier, a bit trickier. What is, what is that thing? You, you're not allowed to guess, Georgia. It looks like a toy. It's a bit fuzzy. You can see the outside of the shadow is not like smooth and sharp like it was for the fork. It's kind of, it's not quite. Well, it actually is a toy giraffe. All right. Last slide. This is going to be the tricky one. What is that? Do you have a guess, Georgia? What is it? A book. A book. Okay. But what book is it? Is it a Mr. Man? It's not a To help you guys, I thought I'd open it up. So the next slide. There you go. Now that should help you. <laughs> Now you can see it's an open book. What book is it? Hungry No. Hungry, no. It's, um, uh, it's not, Mr. Mr. No. Georgia, you saw it, so you can cheat. Where is the green sheep? A classic, <laughs> classic book. Now, the shadow doesn't really help us. We can sort of guess it's a book, but we don't have the foggiest idea what book that is. And so shadows don't quite tell us these things. Same with the wind. We can see the trees blowing and go, that's the wind, but how does the wind work? doesn't really tell us. And so similarly, when it comes for God, we have an answer for what is God like? And that's what Jesus is. Jesus is the image. Jesus is that clear picture of God. So when we want to know what God is like, we can read our Bible and see what Jesus de did, what Jesus said, and that's how we can get a clear picture of the invisible God by looking at Jesus. And that's it. Friends, this is the video from our house party a couple of weeks ago. The house party was a great time, a fellowship together. I don't know if you noticed, but most of those photos seem to be of people eating. <laughs> Can't imagine why. Uh, John's going to bring us the family news. Oh, is it time for the kids to go out? Yeah. It's time for the kids to go out. Why don't I pray as the kids head out? A loving Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks uh, for members of our family of all ages. As the kids he head out for Kids Church, we pray that they would have a great time learning the truth about Jesus. Amen. Oh, more kids. Better still. Thanks, John. Thank you. As the kids are going out, I'd like to thank Phil for uh, add my welcome. G'day, Nick. <laughs> um, it's uh, great being here with you guys. Uh, first of all, if you're cold, let me know so that we can turn the temperature. You're cold? Okay, Nick, you, the um, remote's up there. Can you? Yeah. 
Nick, yeah, because the other thing is, if you let us know, then we can try and get this uh, air conditioning working properly. Yeah. yeah. Last thing I like, like I got last week, uh, a couple of people came out as icicles going, I'm freezing <laughs> after the fact. But if you let us know early, then we can make, try and make things comfortable. Again, comfort, yeah, it's not, church is not all about comfort, but what we want people to do is hear God's word clearly. And if you get distracted by being uncomfortable, that's not a good thing. Okay, um, uh, first of all, uh, in terms of announcement, we had a great Wednesday night last week uh, where we had about 25 people, 24 people, 25 including myself, uh, come and pray. Again, it's happening this Wednesday. Um, I'm just going to move it earlier to 7 o'clock. Why? Because I received a note in my uh, letterbox saying the... Um, the electricity has been cut off at eight till five as they, they're going to replace a pole up the road. So if you can, seven to eight o'clock because there's going to be a power out, scheduled power outage at eight o'clock. In in, yeah, so if it's happening next door, it's going to happen here, unless you want to meet in the dark. <laughs> but I think then that becomes weird and cultish. So <laughs> we won't do that. Um, so this week... 7 p.m. Um, uh, yeah, so if you can make it, that'll be great. Um, and up the back, there is uh, two, uh, one sheet that has the 40 hours, uh, the 40 days of prayer. And so there's a prayer every day. And Lorraine's also putting that up on Facebook as well. So every day, so that we can be praying for our church. Okay, so uh, please uh, be thinking that. Okay. Um, Rosters for 9.30, which will become the 10 o'clock service in, um, what's today? Yeah, next week. <laughs> okay, this is where communications I need to go. Next week, this service is going to move to 10 o'clock. Okay? So next week, we're meeting at 10 o'clock. We're going to put that on Facebook. We're going to put it on our newsletter as well. But also, the 10 o'clock service, there is... Um, a sign-up sheet for there. If you can be uh, a Bible read, if you want to uh, read the Bible, uh, pray, you know, those people that have been praying in the past, if you put your name down. And also, there's a morning tea roster because we are um, having a truncated morning tea stills and we'll hope to develop that as the year goes past. So, so again, next week, 10 o'clock. 9.30 becomes 10 o'clock. And if you can uh, put your name down to do those things. Next slide, thank you. For those that of the 8.15 service, um, next week, one o'clock, up at the Lantern Club, Tim and I are inviting you for lunch. We, we want to get together and we want to hear from you about the future of our third service. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, Tim said, eight o'clock, and then we got feedback from everybody, uh, all quite erratic, <laughs> or from different views. And then, um, then other people uh, had other views. So we go, no, but the best thing to do is let's get together, let's plan, because 8.15 isn't a, uh, a big congregation, but 8.15 people are full of experience. Let's get together and then uh, decide how to move forward. What, what that service would look like and when it'd be on and things like that. But having said that, it'd be good just to get you guys together and just have lunch together so that we can be encouraging each other and praying for each other. You going to be there, Nick? Good. <laughs> At the Lantern Club, it's Roselands. It's the, um, the, what was the bowling, it used to be a bowling club. It was the bowling club in front of Roselands. Okay, so... Um, there is a sign-up sheet at the back. Um, there's some messy uh, writing. That's my writing. We've, if your name's on it and I've written you down, um, that's me. <laughs> but if you, if you go up there and you want to come, you're not on that list, let me know. And then for people at home, if you want to come as well, can you give Leah a call during the week so that we can uh, book that? Okay. Great. Okay, I think... That's all for me. Um, I'm expecting Tim to be back this Wednesday uh, and Tim will be leading the prayer um, meeting on um, uh, Wednesday night. Okay, I think we're going to hear from Kathy. 
been information. Michael and Joe Charles, our Link missionaries in Chile, have expected this to be their last day on the mission field. Um, but lockdowns and political unrest have led them to reflect that this season in Chile sometimes feels more like hard work than harvesting. Then God in his kindness sent them a rare visitor, one of his, their graduates from 2006 and his family. This really encouraged them as a tangible reminder of the way God has been working in Chile to grow his church, both in numbers and maturity, and that long-term ministry can bear fruit. They reflected that gospel work is like gardening. Both require patience, hard work, and even death, but the end of the story is life and hope. They ask for prayers that God will make them faithful and they are thankful for the visible fruit and the promise of more. They quoted 1 Corinthians 3, 6 and 7. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. Amen. Can I suggest we add our prayers to those that uh, Kathy led us in? Let's pray for Mike and Joe. Our loving Heavenly Father, your love knows no bounds, is not bound by geography or political boundaries. Lord, we do pray for the growth of your gospel uh, in Chile. We pray particularly for the ministry that Mike and Joe uh, continue under difficult circumstances. Lord, we do pray that uh, you would continue uh, to encourage them um, as they uh, train pastors and that they indeed would uh, go out into the mission field of Chile and bear much fruit. Be with them, uh, strengthen them and guide them. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And as I invite Susanna to uh, come up and read the Bible, let's uh, prepare ourselves uh, with prayer. Will you pray with me? Our loving Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks that you speak to us through your word. And now as your word is read to us and explained to us, Lord, we pray that you would uh, quieten our minds, open our hearts to uh, believe, open our intellect to understand and change our lives by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Susan. Okay, we have two Bible readings today. And the first one is from the Old Testament and the second one will be from Colossians. The first passage is Malachi chapter 2, verses 1 to 9. Um, and this is the word of the Lord to Israel through the prophet Malachi. And now, you priests, this warning is for you. If you do not listen and if you do not resolve to honour my name, says the Lord Almighty, I will send a curse on you and I will curse your blessings. Yes, I have already cursed them because you have not resolved to honour me. Because of you, I will rebuke your descendants. I will smear on your faces the dung from your festival sacrifices, and you will be carried off with it. And you will know that I have sent you this warning so that my covenant with Levi will continue, says the Lord Almighty. My covenant was with him, a covenant of life and peace, and I gave them to him. This called for reverence, and he revered me and stood in awe of my name. True instruction was in his mouth, and nothing false was found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and uprightness and turned away many from sin. For the lips of a priest ought to preserve knowledge. Because he is the messenger of the Lord Almighty, and people seek instruction from his mouth. But you have turned from the way and by your teaching have caused many to stumble. You have violated the covenant with Levi, says the Lord Almighty. So I have caused you to be despised and hum humiliated before all people, because you have not followed my ways, but have shown partiality in matters of the law. The second reading is from Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. 
The sun is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behaviour. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope set out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, have become a servant. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Susanna. Dear friends, today we're looking at a passage in the Bible which is rich and very theologically dense. Having said that, that means there's actually a great risk as a preacher to either overwhelm or to be very, very boring. I have John Chapman. John Chapman was a great preacher who's now gone to glory. I've got his words floating in my head. And one of the words is, whatever you do when you preach, don't ever be boring. Another thing floating around my head is, again, I don't know whether it's... uh, now just legend, but apparently he spoke to, uh, he, after a young minister uh, did a 40-minute sermon, John approached him and said, brother, some people in this world can preach for 40 minutes. You are not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so friends, my goal is definitely not to preach for 40 minutes. <laughs> And I'll try not to be boring, but we're going to dive into some deep water. As we see who Jesus is and why knowing who Jesus is is important. That, and that to know not just who he is, you know, just like that shadow thing, but actually to see who he really is and to know Jesus fully. Remember that for Paul, what is most important that we found last week was to be continually filled with the knowledge of God's will through wisdom and understanding. So we must know God. And to know God, we must know Jesus. And to know Jesus, we must know God's word, the Bible. And the thing is, none of this can happen without the Holy Spirit enabling us to know and understand. Knowing that, let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you have revealed your truth to us in this passage today through your spirit. Help us to understand, not only in the mind, but may it affect our hearts and may it affect our relationship. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, remember the doctrine of the Trinity the doctrine of Trinity, which doctrine just means teaching, it's teaching. The doctrine of Trinity says that God is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and those three are one. Okay, God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, one in three. The doctrine of the Trinity also says that the Father is not the Son and is not the Spirit. The Son is not the Father and is not the Spirit. And the Spirit proceeds from the Father and Son. So each one of them are not the same. So one in three, three in one. Both is true.
the Trinity. They are one, but they are different. And we see that today in our passage. Jesus is the visible image of our invisible God. We can't see God, but we can see Jesus. But Jesus and God are different because Jesus, you can see, God, you can't. Which, again, follows from what I just said. We can only see God if we see Jesus. And we can only know God if we know Jesus. And unlike the shadows that Nick had up and the kids talk, when we see Jesus, we see God fully. Okay, and then we read. On, then we read that. Read on. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Jesus is the creator and the sustainer. And if you, read, if you know your Bible, this can only be said about God himself. But here, Paul is clear. He's speaking about Jesus. So we see that God and Jesus as the same. No one is above Jesus in heaven or on earth. No powers, physical, uh, no powers on earth, physical or spiritual. All things were created... Uh, by him and for him. And we're talking about Jesus here. All creation was created by Jesus and for Jesus, and no one is greater than Jesus. Jesus was before all things, and Jesus is supreme as God is supreme. And one of the points that we need to note here is there is a divide that no one can pass. That that divide is the creator and the created divide. Those that are created cannot be the creator and the creator cannot be created. I know what, I, what side I sit on. I'm a creature. I was created by God. I was made in his image. What side does Jesus sit on? From what we just read, Jesus is the creator. He's on the creator side of this divide. And why is this important? Verse 19. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him reconcile to himself all things whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. It is important because it's through Jesus dying on the cross we are made right with God. And here is one of the many reasons why Jesus has to be God for us to be made right. Again, back to um, John Chapman. I remember him uh, starting a sermon saying, how can God say we are right with him if he knows that we are not? How can God say that we are right with him when God knows that we are not? The thing that we need to understand is that God is God. God, does, God answers to himself. But what that means is that God doesn't do whatever he likes. But you go, yeah, but God does. You're saying God can do whatever he wants. He's God. But God can only be God. God is perfect in every way. God is perfectly just and perfectly right. And when we read the Bible, it tells us there's some things God can't do. God cannot lie. God cannot tolerate the wicked. Friends, God has to be true to himself. 
God has to be true to his own character. God is a God of truth. God is a God of light. And as he spoke to Moses, when Moses asked him, what, what is my name? He said, I am who I am. Friends, God's character is perfectly just. So when he tells us we must die for our sins, and when we sin, death is owed to God. And God can't just wipe it out with an eraser saying, oh, no, it doesn't matter, because it does matter and because it happened. For God to be just, friends, when justice happens, friends, when we do the crime, we must do the time. Again, may I state again, God is not answerable to anyone else, not to the devil, not to an outside judge that sits above him. No, God only answers to himself. Which brings us back to our questions. How can God say we are right when we are not? How does God meet his own standard? Our problem is sin, and we deserve the penalty of sin, death and separation from God for all eternity. So in Colossians, uh, in verse 21, once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behaviour, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to be present, to present you wholly in his sight without blemish and free of accusation. We are made right with God, reconciled with God, by Christ's physical body through death. There's nothing new here. You've heard this many times before. We are right, made right with God by trusting in Jesus' death on the cross, and that death on the cross is taking the penalty of sin. Uh, taken our penalty of sin, has washed us clean and presents us to God as though we've not sinned before. Okay, you've all heard that. Jesus dies so that we don't have to. Jesus sacrificed himself in our place. Jesus makes an atonement for our sin. And this happens for all those who trust in Jesus. And when we believe that, to God, it's like we have not ever sinned. And I hope you say amen to that. But do you know there's people in the world that teaches that Jesus is not God? When they read uh, verse 15, here's the image of the invisible God and the firstborn of creation, they'll say things that Jesus is created by God so Jesus is actually on the creature side of that creature-creator uh, divide. And they say, yes, Jesus is the best, and he's supreme, and he's sinless, but he's not God. He is the best creature. And God sent Jesus, his created son, upon, uh, upon this earth to take the sins of the whole world upon himself. Friends, do you see the injustice in that? A few years ago, people were saying that God is guilty of cosmic child abuse. And they would be right if Jesus was God's created son. Even though sinless, God sent him to earth to be sacrificed on a cross for his sinful creatures. And if Jesus, God's created son, then after Jesus' death, even though resurrected, there's still a debt to be owed. Not to God, because Jesus' death has paid it, but there's a debt to Jesus. He dies when he shouldn't have died. For Jesus suffered so God the Father's anger 
can be satisfied. If Jesus is the created son, not God, and separated from God, a different being, there's still that debt to be owed to this separate being, Jesus. And atonement, and God is not true to himself because he hasn't settled all the books. It doesn't add up. But that's not true, is it? For Jesus is God. He is not a creature. He was with God and is God, as we read in 1 John. No, John 1. God did not sacrifice his innocent creature for his guilty creatures. For Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Our debt we owe to God, we also owe to Jesus. When we sin against God, we sin against God, Father, Son and Spirit. When we understand that Jesus is God, what we see on the cross is not a father punishing an innocent son. No, we see God the Son self-sacrifice, self-substitute to make a perfect atonement for our sin. God within a trinity deals with our sin. The debt is paid by the one who the debt is owed. Or, the law is satisfied by the lawmaker himself. God within the Trinity pays a real price for real satisfaction. God within the Trinity fulfills all justice. God is true to himself. Again, why is this important? It's important because our salvation depends on it. Because our salvation is to trust in Jesus. Our Jesus is God. Our our God is the Father of Jesus. The Holy Spirit come from Jesus. Our salvation depends on it because the gospel tells us that we were once enemies from God. But because of everything that we thought and everything that we did was against God, but God made himself right for us, reconciled uh, us to the Father because the Son died on the cross. And now we are holy, without blemish, free from accusation for all those who keep the faith and continue and not move from that hope. Friends, today, Jesus' the Son is Jesus, is God the Son. He is supreme. He is the gospel. And we don't move from that. Jesus the Son, Jesus who is our Lord and God. Let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you do, through your word, give us a glimpse into your majesty and, how, and also your workings. And as humans, we admit that we don't fully grasp uh, how you work sometimes, but we thank you for your word. I ask that your Holy Spirit be upon us. Help us to know the Father more. Help us to know by knowing, help us know the Father more by knowing the Son more. Help us to know that we are saved through Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Phil.
we're just going to have a time of common prayer. So if you'd like to bow before the Lord in prayer. Okay. Gracious Father God, as we look towards Easter, we thank you that for the sake of all humanity, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to bring salvation to the world. Lord Jesus Christ, for our sake you fasted 40 days and 40 nights. May we too consider your abstinence at the start of your ministry and with the Spirit's help, may, may we use this period in our own lives to reflect on all that you have accomplished on our behalf. May we seek to obey your will in righteousness and true holiness to your honour and glory. Let us pray that we, as your followers, may grow in and show the same self-sacrificing love that Jesus Christ has shown us. Help us, Father God, to understand and know the meaning of your son's death and resurrection and teach us to reflect it in our own lives and help us to want to share this good news with those who do not know you. We continue to pray for many parts of our world that are experiencing all kinds of troubles and strife as the world pandemic continues into this second year. We pray for all countries and nations who have been afflicted by COVID-19, both by the loss of thousands of lives, as well as in serious economic terms. We pray especially for the current worst affected countries impacted by the virus, the United States of America, India, Brazil, the United Kingdom, Russia, France, Spain, Italy, Turkey and Germany, as well as many more countries around the world where the virus has continued to spread. We thank you that the spread of the virus has now lessened in some previously worse impacted countries. We thank you that thousands of people around the world have now been administered vaccines in many of these worst impacted countries and we pray that the approved vaccines will continue to be effectively administered and work to eradicate the spread of the virus in communities. We also pray that the richer nations will help to ensure that vaccines are given to poorer nations. We also thank you that the vaccine, as of tomorrow, will begin to be administered to frontline people and aged care homes in Australia and pray that as time goes on more peop and more people are vaccinated, that this, was, this will help to bring a sense of social and economic normality to our country. During this time of pandemic, many nations around the world have experienced many kinds of strife and tribulations. One such country is Myanmar. We pray that you will bring peace, justice and stability to Myanmar where anti-coup demonstrations have heightened and where civil protesters are now experiencing deadly violence from the military, junta and police. This country has a long history of injustices and tribulation and we ask that a government be established that will rule for the welfare and benefit of its entire population. We pray too for Nigeria, where on Wednesday, gunmen kidnapped over 40 people, many of whom were children. One boy has already been killed. We pray for this country where kidnapping of children is now commonplace and where trauma is visited upon many families who fear sending their children to school. We pray for wisdom for the government and those in authority in Nigeria, as they seek to peacefully resolve the situation. We ask that the people and children be safely returned and that the issues in this region that lead to these kidnappings be addressed so that such kidnappings will stop. We continue to ask you, Lord God, to restrain Satan's stronghold 
in countries and nations around the world, including our own. And we ask you to use everything Satan intends for harm, disruption and chaos for your good and to your glory. We beseech you, Lord, to continue to keep your universal church through this time and uphold your remnant in all the nations throughout the world. Please keep your universal church with a spirit of truth, unity and concord. We pray that Christians all over the world will agree to the truth of your holy word, abide by it and live by it in unity and godly love. We pray for all our church leaders. We pray for all church leaders that they will exemplify you by living godly lives of humility that are above reproach and that their life and teaching may set forth your true life-giving word. Please grant to all your people your heavenly grace that we may hear and read your word with reverent and obedient hearts. We pray that we may continue to serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. Please grant this, Father, for your Son, Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lost at the fall, running away when I'd hear you call. Father, you were at your will. I had no righteousness of my own. I had no right to draw near your throne. Father, you loved me still. And in love before you laid the world's foundation. Destined to adopt me as your own You have raised me up so high above my station I'm a child of God by grace and grace alone You left your home to seek out the lost You knew the great and terrible cause But Jesus, your face was saved I worked my fingers down to the bone Nothing I did could ever atone But Jesus, you paid my debt By your blood I have redemption and salvation Lord, you died that I might reap what you have sown And you rose that I might be a new creation I am born again by grace and grace alone. I was in darkness all of my life. I never knew the day from the night. The spirit you made me see I swore I knew the way on my own Head full of rocks, a heart made of stone The spirit you moved in At your touch my sleeping spirit was awakened On my darkened heart the light of Christ has shone Fall into a kingdom that cannot be shaken Heaven sealed is in by grace and grace alone Yes, I'll stand in faith by grace and grace alone. 
I will run the race by grace and grace alone. I will slay my sin by grace and grace alone. I will reach the end by grace and grace alone. Friends, will you pray with me? Almighty God, all good things come from you. Throughout this week, help us to hear your word, that we may know and speak the truth. Help us to obey your word, that we may honour you in all we do. Save us from all that is false, and renew us by your spirit, that we may know life, life in all its fullness. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, um, I think we've got morning tea set up outside. I think it's still a nice day out there, so uh, do feel free to uh, join in a socially distanced and responsible way, of course. Have a great week. God bless.